Hey guys, this is Adam Jones from London Perch Finder. Hope you're well. Um, I am back out on the bank. It's just after work. It's about quarter to five. Um, hoping to get an hour or so in before dark. Um, I've got my MSX Limited, which has uh, been in the cupboard for a few months. So I thought I'd get it out and give it a bit of a spin. It's starting to feel um, a bit neglected. Uh, strap my older baron on. Uh, Going to stick some neds um, and go and see if I can find a few perch. So thanks very much for coming along to another one of my YouTube videos. Um, hopefully we're going to find a few fish. If not, this will be a very short video. Um, but thanks so much for all of those guys and girls that are liking, subscribing to the channel. Um, this is just something that I'm doing in my spare time for a bit of fun. I've taken the adverts off um, of the videos just to try and keep it as light as possible. And uh, so you're not getting bothered by adverts all of the time. Um, and uh, thanks so much for coming and looking at the videos. If you don't like them, really sorry. I wouldn't bother watching anymore because they're all pretty similar. Just me, ginger me, out on the bank trying to catch a few fish. So uh, thanks very much for tuning in. Let's go see if we can find some perch. I'll speak to you guys very soon. Right, guys, I'm just making up a Texas rig. Um, I'm going to fish Texas today. I want to try and have a little bit more action in that hook and a little bit of a freer um, kind of feeling when the fish takes the bait. So I've got a 1-0 worm hook gamakatsu, one from here, um, and a bullet weight, tungsten bullet weight from Top of Manor. That's five grams. Uh, the only other thing you could add to this is a little bead between the two when you tie them up just to add a bit of extra noise. But what I found is with these larger eye gamakatsu hooks, you get a nice knocking against that weight anyway. Um, so I don't always use a bead, mostly because I haven't got a load of beads knocking around. So um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tie this on and uh, then we'll get fishing. Right, there's the rigged up bait that I'm going to start with. Only thing I've added to the hook is a float stop. You can use a kind of bait stop or whatever um, that I've just added to the back corner of the hook to stop this from sliding down when the fish takes so that when the fish does take it pushes the bait down this way and obviously exposes the hook rather than the bait going this way and kind of using it as something to to free itself so that's what we're going to start with fingers crossed we can find one let's get going please don't go straight into a snag oh what's that bit of metal to start us off There's a perch. Nice fish to start off with. First fish to start the session. Gorgeous little stripey. Absolutely nailed it after a couple of pops. Let's get it back, see if we can find another. Right, that's uh, first fish of the session. Again, the only problem I do find with the Texas rig and Carolina rig, which you saw there, is because there's no, um, or very limited resistance for the bait, the perch have a tendency of absolutely annihilating it. And very, very rarely when I'm fishing, neds or chebs do I have to use forceps to unhook the fish um, 
and it is much much more likely if you don't strike straight away with a Texas rig or a Carolina rig that you deep hook the fish so just one to bear in mind you need to be on your wits um, because there's nothing worse than a deep hooked fish right, hopefully we can find a couple more really good start so I'm just fishing a slack that's at the back of a bridge at the moment I'm just kind of using the, the slack water at the back of the bridge stanchion as that bit of cover that the fish might be looking for So all I'm doing, same way as I fish the Ned, as a Cheb rig, just kind of tightening up to the weight, letting the bait pause on the bottom, and then each time just making my way back to, uh, to the starting point, just taking up a little bit of slack each time, um, and hopefully enticing these fish into a take or two. It's a nice start. Hey guys, there we go. Sorry you missed it, but another nice size perch. Um, again, caught on the Texas rig. I was on the phone, dropped it in the edge, a couple of bounces, and uh, the line just went off. Let's get this very, very lively one back. And he's away, there he goes. Oh no. Let's bite right in the middle of the channel then. So we can find him again. There you go, that's a good one. That is a good one. Come on. That was a distance as well. No, it's not as big as I thought, I don't think. No, that's, that's a decent fish. There you go. That one's knocking on one and three quarters. Probably just touching on two. It's a start for 10, isn't it? Let's get that weight out of there. There we go. Let's have a look at her. Calm down. Oh, that's a nice perch. That is a nice fish. Right, so I'm, I'm not supporting the fish by holding its mouth. I've just got hold of its mouth so that I can keep hold of it if it starts to thrash. Try not to dangle these fish by the mouth and make sure you're always supporting the body. If you are picking them up, always have your finger just kind of holding the, be the belly until you can get a hand underneath. But that is a beautiful perch. Let's get this one back, see if we can find his mum. Look at that belly. Starting to get fat for winter. Love it. Alright, let's go again. See if we can find another one in a similar spot. That was a great bite. 
I was just working that down the middle of the channel there. It's always lovely to catch them at distance like that. That was almost at the total length of my cast. As I'm bringing them back in, I always try and keep them down as well. Keep that rod tip low and only get them up to go in the net. Right, I hope you guys are well. I am uh, back out on the canal. I have uh, decided, this is again another hour session um, after work. I couldn't get through to the bigger fish, even though the smaller fish were biting. Um, yesterday so plan today is to go slightly bigger i've got a top burst skirted tungsten jig i've left the keeper on um with a trd standard finesse trd um, i'm going to go slightly bigger um, and fish the same areas a bit of an experiment and see if we can get a slightly larger stamp of fish um you know we might not get those smaller ones so we might end up without anything but you know really want to try and find those bigger ones so let's give this a go and see how we get on I've just stepped it up to my Legend Tournament bass. Just to give me a bit more casting weight. See if we can find something. So I have thrown these baits on my BFS rods. Um, they're obviously above uh, casting weight on the rods, so it's just worth being aware you can't throw them as hard as you want. You know, you can get away with kind of lobbing them in, but again, it's against the rating of the rod. So you need to use your own your own common sense on what you can or can't do on the rods that you've got. Um, but I do find sometimes going up to a really, you know, quite considerably bigger bait um, it can sort out those bigger fish. It's a little bit more profile. Had a little bit of rain in the system as well. So the clarity is not quite what it was yesterday. So something a little bit bigger could well be the answer. shaking its head like a big perch. The rod is going round. Oh, that's a good fish. Yeah, that's a nice one. Wow, well, it gave a great account of itself. That is not as big as I've previously thought, but still a decent fish, still going for it. Get your head up. Oh, it's trying to do me in the inside. There we go. Bigger jig, bigger fish. Come on. Hey guys, uh, right, so the uh, the change of jig plan has played off. Um, I've come back to a spot where I was struggling to find them before. And uh, I've been, just slowly lift her up for you, been rewarded with this lovely 42 centimeter, two pound, 12 ounce, absolute beauty of a perch. 
Um, I'm going to get her back in, see if we can find another one. But I'm absolutely landed with that. It's definitely the change, slightly bigger jig. I knew I was only fishing for a couple of bites, but it's definitely paid off. So um, see if we can find another. And uh, if this is the end of the video, then uh, it's a nice place to finish. See you guys in a bit. Hey guys, me again. Typically the GoPro is out of battery. It's going dark and uh, I've just managed to land this 45 centimeter, three pounds, 10 ounce, absolute whale of a stripey. I mean, what a fight, what a fight. Head shakes, power, drag, typically no GoPro, but I'm absolutely landed with that. Oh, right, let's get it back in, see if I can find one more. Hey guys, right, that's the end of the session tonight. Um, just blown my mind, to be completely honest. Um, that fish was massive, genuinely huge. I thought it was a four, I saw it come up into the net. The fight was unbelievable, massive head shakes. As soon as I set the hook, fry went everywhere. I didn't even know there was fry there. Um, it was just mental. And um, it just goes to show that changing up some methods, you know, trying some slightly bigger jigs um, than last night, can bring rewards. Would I have caught them on the other method? Probably. Um, but at the end of the day, I think changing something up and trying something different, using a different rod, using a different jig, um, can just kind of keep it fresh day by day and make you want to get out of uh, out of the house, out of your car, um, and do it. You know, today it's it's kind of raining. It's not brilliant. I could have gone home and sat by the fire, and instead I've had a three pound ten and a two pound twelve. Um, five fish yesterday. That one kind of just knows in on the on the two pound mark. Um, just goes to show that these short sessions really do pay off. If you can do them regularly and you can fish at the right time, there are fish out there to be caught. And if you're sat at home, you ain't going to catch them. That's the only uh, difference. Obviously, if you can only do one session a week, then do a full day, do your morning, do your evening. Um, but if you can get out just even in the morning for an hour, in the evening for an hour, you know, keep cycling through your spots, keep mixing up the methods um, and the rewards will come. So thanks so much for coming to the channel. Thanks so much for watching the video. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please feel free to check out the rest of my videos. Um, and uh, for those guys that have watched all of the videos and girls and subscribed, thank you so, so much. If you haven't already subscribed, please drop me a subscribe. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna keep putting these videos out for as long as you guys enjoy watching them. So thanks very much. Hope you're having a great week. I've just seen something top in the edge, maybe one more cast, and uh, I'll speak to you guys very soon. Tight lines until next time. <laughs> right, ready? I'm rolling still. Cool. Hey guys, um, back out on the canal and I don't have my GoPro with me. I've just bought some batteries for the GoPro and typically left it in the car. Um, this is two or three days later from my short sessions um, recording, but I'm going to add this in anyway because it's an absolute joke, if I'm honest. Um, I've just beaten my PB, um, which is years and years in the making perch fishing wise. And um, it's this absolute stunner of a four pound, seven ounce perch. She absolutely obliterated a skirted jig on the bottom in an area that I just wasn't expecting to find a fish. Um, and has completely blown me away. The fight was awesome. Um, a couple of great mates with me. A little bit panicky about getting the net underneath it, but <laughs> there she is. Um, like we said, this has been a long, long time in the making and, you know, hopefully a sign of what's to come this season. You know, that's four pounds, seven ounce in, in October. So God knows what this fish looks like in February. So we're gonna get it back. Um, hope you've enjoyed the video uh, and I'll speak to you guys very, very soon. Cheers.